I want to give a brief introduction to the um, economics unit and kind of cover what we're going to be doing with this unit and setting up the readings a little bit so that we understand generally what we're going to be doing but also a little bit about what we're not going to be doing with this unit um, and so we have some kind of direction to it. Okay? First of all, this is the economics unit. We're going to be doing four different readings, um, <clears throat> four different authors who would be considered to be absolutely necessary to understand the um, field of economics. Um, a very important point to make from the beginning is that economics is not simply money. That is a common misunderstanding. I don't think any economist would say economics is really about money. It happens to be one element within the field that gets more attention than it probably deserves. Really what economics is about is about the production and distribution of wealth. How do societies and how do businesses, how do individuals operate when they are talking about the production and distribution of wealth? Um, why does this happen? How does it happen? How should we go about it? So that's what economics really is. The production and distribution of wealth. That's what it studies. Okay? So it's slightly different than what many people assume who think it's just about money. It's not just about that. <clears throat> okay? Um, one of the unique things about economics compared to other fields of study is that it is both ideological and empirical. So it overlaps a little bit with the political science unit in that it does have values. It does get in, into what do we think is most important. How are we going to produce certain things and should we produce certain things? Who should um, own it and then how should it be distributed? Those are both um, value um, judgments and value um, issues, but they're also going to be empirical. What works most effectively? When you're dealing with empirical things, you're dealing with things that could be measured and demonstrated. This is an aspect of any kind of science. Sciences in physics, biology, but also in economics can all be measured or demonstrated. <clears throat> they don't get as much into value statements. But economics is unique in that it has one foot in ideology and one foot in empiricism. It does both. It cannot get away from one or the other. It must constantly be uh, wrangling, it must constantly be wrangling with both issues of ideology but also with empirical issues. So it's important to understand how it does overlap them because certain statements within um, economics are simply not founded in empiricism. They just cannot be supported empirically, but they just express an ideological viewpoint. Most good economists can actually balance the two. You can have economists disagreeing but understanding each other. They can take approaches that are ideologically different, but they can agree over the empirical um, measurements of those statements. So that's what often happens in economics. They will, from both sides, both liberal and conservative sides, dismiss certain approaches to economics because they're empirically unsound. But they can also disagree um, on how much something is valuable and why does it contribute to this or should it contribute to that. Issues of free trade and other things get into both empirical issues but also ideological issues. And we're going to be going through that as we go through these readings. Okay. So it is a field that is both ideological and empirical. Okay? The readings we're doing are really the main figures of economics. Um, Smith, Adam Smith is, I, I don't think there's much discussion about it, he is considered to be the father of economics and would certainly be on the very short list of the people who have changed history. Um, Smith's approach to economics um, revolutionized how we understand it. He is somewhat unique in that he comes from a philosophical background and he really wrote the first economic books before economics existed. And I should say it's one book. Um, so Smith is recognized as the father of modern economics. Marx would come after him about 75 years after and be writing at a time when the world had been industrialized. And we'll get into the nature of um, what happens when Smith economics develop over time they come into a crisis issue, which Marx covers. So we'll get into that and we'll try to understand how that works. One thing I will mention now and I will bring up again, um, 
Marx is a little bit unique in that he never saw his ideas put to work. We will come to that later on. Um, please um, try to avoid confusing his ideas with what would come later on in both the Soviet Union, Communist China, and today in North Korea. I don't think you would have foreseen what was embodied then with his ideas. So try to read him and see him as built upon Smith, and I will come back to that later on. Keynes is an economist coming about 75 years after Marx, and Keynes is Maynard Keynes <coughs> writing about monetary policy. Um, I've been teaching Keynes for over 10 years now, and he was very difficult for most students to understand at first, and it was hard to demonstrate with what he was addressing. But I'll tell you right now, his issues that he wrote about in the 1920s um, would definitely be very real to folks by the time the Depression came along in 1929, but also to everybody today who realizes what happened with the housing market and how it crashed and how it pulled down the banking sector, or the banking market too. Keynes's ideas will explain to people why we bailed out the banking industry. Um, you might agree or you might disagree with it, but it will explain why it was done. And it gets into monetary policy and why that is absolutely essential um, to international economics and national economics. The last one we'll be reading is Milton Friedman, who gets into why businesses behave in certain ways. You're going to see Friedman's ideas are probably the easiest to understand, but also be aware um, they're also quite difficult to write about. So Friedman, you're going to see, is very much connected to Keynes, Marx, and Smith. And in fact, Keynes is connected to Marx and Smith, and Marx is connected to Smith. What you see is a development of ideas that go from Smith all the way up to Friedman. You don't necessarily get a sense of right and wrong. You get a sense of them working with similar ideas and developing them. So that's what we're going to be doing with this one. We're going to be going through the different ideologies, but also getting into some idea of how this is measured. Um, so what, then what we're going to be doing with this essay assignment is applying it to a contemporary situation. That will be the goal of this assignment. Okay? All right, take care.